together. I've got mine. We're gonna we're gonna do this whole thing. Like oh yeah. Yeah. So we got JB from JB Reviews. Yeah. And of course me, your lovely master tech from Truck Stuff, T R U K S T U F. And we yeah. have side by side. 2025? 2025 with the new power line. Yeah. 2024 with the old standby. That's the Eisen, by the way. Yeah, it's, cool it is an Eisen, so we'll prove it's an Eisen. There's the trans pan for all of you who question it's an Eisen. Wow, that pan looks totally different, too. No, no cooling elements really on that one either. No, uh uh. But this one also has that thermal bypass valve. Oh, okay. Which are prone to failure. Oh, okay. That little bugger right there. Um, if when we get over to the other truck, you'll notice that there's no more a thermal bypass valve. They don't need one with that power line transmission. Okay. You want to go take a look at it? Let's go take a look at it. So we're going to move over underneath this bad boy. Okay. Yeah, there's a big difference on that pan too. Look at that. Yeah. It has more cooling elements way more cooling fins i'm excited to see what the aftermarket does as far as replacing this with a non-plastic pan yeah <laughs> banks i, I agree with hop that. on that we need a, a really kick butt banks <laughs> fin pan for the zf anyway some yeah. noticeable differences that we have under here we're going to start right here at the front of the exhaust if you notice that right there is a def injector oh. which means that the scr is before the dpf and they split the dpf doc combination that's on that truck and now we have a doc right there so we have the doc is part of the downpipe into the scr and then over into the dpf so a little bit of difference you want to go back over the other side show them yeah go back over there we'll come back over under here you have a, oh, I'm not recording anymore. Oh, shoot. oh, you're good. Go ahead. Over here we have the DOC DPF in the same unit. This is the DOC side, and this is the DPF side. And then you have the SCR behind it. Yeah, totally different setup there. Totally different. So I'm I'm hoping that part of that is going to reduce the issues that they've had with this DPF DOC combination. Um, we've had a lot of failures in these that we've had to replace a lot of them. So, and then the earlier editions of the SCR, we went through a massive SCR recall where we literally just tore the SCR out and bolted in a new one. Mm. Now this is the 2024 as an FYI, just in case you forgot. There's the chassis mounted fuel filter for the 24. Oh yeah. And then we'll see when we drop down the 2025, mm -hmm. both fuel filters are now up on top. Yes. Mounted to the side of the engine. So this is the, this is definitely smooth. Can you tell the difference now? Yeah. So, so while we're talking about that, we'll jump straight from this one to that one. That's a five and a half gallon yep. DEF tank. The other one's a seven and a half gallon. So you're gonna get a lot more range out of that DEF system on the other one. Plus on these ones, they put this plastic cover that covers the pump on the bottom. Okay. I'm not a fan of those, but I'm also one of those types of guys that is not afraid to take my truck off road. Oh, yeah. So I would literally beat that thing until it broke. Wow. On the new one though, they did fix that, didn't they? They did fix that, but then they made another critical mistake. Oh. oh, that's right. Yeah, so on the new one, you can definitely see the size difference of that DEF tank. That's huge. And we have a full metal bottom here. So they fixed that. They fixed that. However, there's your DEF line coming across. They took it underneath the cross member. So for all of you that like to go out bombing in the sagebrush, in the boonies, over trees, you're probably gonna tear that thing apart. Jeez, that was a bad design. That was a bad design. I wouldn't be surprised if after a certain number of failures of those, they bring out a new def line that reroutes it. I wonder if they have any heating elements in this. They don't really do anything with these DEF tanks and they're prone to the freeze. The pumps have 
the heating elements on them. Oh, okay, gotcha. Remember gotcha. all of those orange finger floppy things? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Those are the heating elements on the pump. Ah, I see, gotcha. Right. And then on these lines, the line internally has a heating element in it. Got you. So they're able to thaw out those lines when they're in freezing conditions. And okay. then the pump, of course, thaws out the tank. I see. And if you notice back here, we don't have a heating element or a fuel filter. Sorry. Yeah, fuel filter. Yeah. Go it's gone. from heating elements. Yeah, it's gone. The canister. It'll be up on top. Okay. And what everybody doesn't want to talk about is this right here. Yeah, you know what that is. That's an injector for the DPF. Oh, Go for a regen cycle there. So they're spitting diesel in there. Yep. That sucks. That does. It's it's not something that I wanted to see, but we'll see what happens. I, I mean, I guess it's better than wet stacking, right? When because yeah. then it would have to go through the combustion due to DPF. Which yes, is probably worse, but that's just something extra to fail. Exactly. Versus yeah. just doing your old changes a little bit sooner, which most people do anyway. Well, and and that's what we're gonna what what I think they're trying to resolve on that is, if you remember, we had that video where we talked a lot about fuel dilution. Mm -hmm. I think they're gonna try and solve that problem of the fuel dilution by injecting fuel at the DPF instead of wet stacking the engine. Got you, okay. You ready to pull these trucks down so we can see uh, the engine base? Let's do it. Let's go. First thing we're gonna talk about here is the CCV filter. That's what's underneath this cover right here. So you'll see when we go over to the other one that they've changed this whole setup. They've changed the EGR bypass valve. They've changed the EGR valve, the whole intake side and everything. So there's 2024. Cool. Now we'll walk over here to the 2025. And as you can see, there is quite a bit of difference in the filter housing configuration. I kind of like it too because they also brought it forward from underneath the cowl. It's going to make it a little bit easier to change out. Not that it was really hard anyway. But one other thing that I think some of you guys are going to catch on to is what is that? What are those? <laughs> That's a <laughs> knock sensor. Oh. The old one used to be mounted way down underneath. Kind of a pain in the butt to get to, but they moved it. And then, of course, you have your lovely oil filter. Now it's a top canister style. It's gonna make changing your filter a little bit easier. But we've hinted a little bit about the fuel filters. And now we're gonna show you that they have both filters mounted on the engine right there. And you got your first one there and then your second one right back there. And you said what size socket you have to use? It's 28 millimeter. You have a video on that, so be sure to check out Truck Stuff's video. Yeah. On JV Review's channel, by the way. They're going to already see it on your channel, so. Yeah, they'll see it there and here and wherever else. Uh, some people are familiar with that socket, some people aren't. Yeah. But it really, you can't just use any 28 millimeter. The, the normal shallow 28 millimeters, like that tall, they still have enough height on them that they want to rock on that nut that's cast into the plastic housing mm. you end up stripping those lugs off these ones are much shorter they're only about that tall total and they really grab it and don't rock off the top of it so nice yeah so real quickly too no more grid heater no more grid heater we have glow plugs glow uh, plugs we have six of them right yeah six glow plugs six things to fill versus one right yeah <laughs> but we if we lose a glow plug, we just lose a glow plug. We don't lose a whole entire engine. That's true. That's very true. Grid heater fails fails, and that, that nut and bolt fall back into the intake, get sucked into cylinder six. Everybody who owns a Cummins understands that that right there is a catastrophic failure. Mm. Yeah. And then on this side, you mentioned the intake manifold is different. Too. Yes. The intake manifold is aluminum. You'll be able to see some of that right through in there. Um, the EGR valve actually comes right in right there in it. I'm not big on how big of a pipe is inside. We're gonna, on one of the other videos, we have a picture attached that shows the inside of that intake manifold with the EGR valve protruding mm -hmm. into it. And it takes up a good third of the space. Wow. 
but we've got total redesign head intake are the heads aluminum no the head is steel oh steel. okay steel. Yes, the head is steel but your rocker grid aluminum oh. it's totally different the intake manifolds aluminum which i'm pretty excited for banks to design as something that flows very 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 well yeah hint 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 i'm gonna have to get hold of the r d department <laughs> so we got to show them real quickly too on this truck the yes. oil filter is a canister style so oil filter on this one is your spin on and it's right there it's gray you can see it now to get those things out you really need to purchase one of these cheap little tools right here so you'll use your wrench and you'll spin it down and it'll sit on the cross member and then you get one of these little guys right here that spins into the top of that oil filter and it's got a nice little handle right here so that you can grab it and pull it through that wheel well i didn't know that even existed dude yeah there's there's a wow. bunch of companies that make just an aluminum spin on i like that one it's plastic it's cheap it has a little finger grip so that you can just pull yeah, it right yeah. through it's not it's not rocket science but we Some gotta people don't understand oil, it. We gotta show them the oil cancer is on this truck too. That way they have an idea. So you saw what it was for the 24. Yeah, 24 oil filters under there. 25 oil filter is right there. And that's a 28 socket too, right? Yes, it's the same size as the fuel filter. So you can use the same socket on all of them. Is that an Allen key on the top of I there? bet that's so that you can pre-fill that oil filter. Oh. Gotcha. I was wondering about that earlier. Okay. Yeah, I that bet you sense. that's so that you can pre-fill that oil filter and not have any delay in oil supply to the engine on startup. Got you. Dude, like, thank you so much for this. Yes. This was amazing. Like, Anytime. I, I learned a lot. But, you know, we got to let them hear the engine. So, we got to <laughs> start this one up. And then we got to start the old school 6.7 over here. Yes. Obviously, we know the results, but, you know, we got to do it since we have them side by side. We got it. We got Absolutely. it. So I'll fire this one up. Okay. Here, hold my camera. Absolutely. Same Cummins. Sounds identical to the other one. Let's let it calm for a second, and you can actually hear the motor. Let's turn it off the fire here. Okay. Oh, you're good. Now you're good. And then here's the 2024. That one sounds deeper, for sure. Oh no, 100%. This one's quieter. Way quieter. It is way quieter. Way quieter on the engine. Wow. When you're sitting inside, it doesn't sound no different, but when it's open right here, they sound quite a bit different. Oh yeah. There you, there you have it, guys. There you have it. Don't like listening to these rattling diesels anymore. Yeah. They got quieter and quieter. And that is, yeah, it from 2018 to 2019, they got way quieter oh. because of hydraulic lash adjusters, right? Well, and so the biggest problem there is when you have the the flat tap and solid lifter design, there is a service interval for resetting the lash on the intake and exhaust. And that's right at 120,000 miles. We need to start selling more of that service, but a lot of people don't think that they need to do that that adjustment. And that attributes a lot to the noise. Is 120,000 miles? That engine's you know things are starting to wear a little tiny bit. So you have to constantly make those adjustments on the valve train components that 
need it. Mm -hmm. Especially if you don't want a clattering diesel. 100%. Yeah. But well, there you have it, guys. Thank you so much for watching the video. Yes, Hold thank you so out. much. Thank you, Josh. You bet. Thank you. Next time I get one of these in to actually do some services on, we're going to do some more videos on that because we've got to tear into one of these. I can't wait. I would love to be able to just start tearing that one apart right now and show you the guts of it, but they won't let me. Yeah, it's all good. I'm sure, hey, if you don't live in Utah and if your truck has a failure, this is the best master tech in the United States of America. The same. I, I don't think I'm the best, but... The best. Don't, don't, hey, uh, you are the best. It's not about just the work you do. It's how clean you are and how meticulous you are. I, I try. Let's yeah. put it that way. I, go. I go through a lot of lengths to keep my areas organized. When I'm tearing apart vehicles, keeping all of my fasteners organized, make sure they go back in the exact holes they're supposed to go into, so on and so forth. I, all I can say is that I try to do the best job that I can do and provide the best service to my customers that I can. You know, that's that's all we can do. Yeah. And I'm proud enough of my work that I actually put my face on it. Oh, yeah. How many of you guys know what your mechanic looks like? So there's a testament right there. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Alrighty. Thank Appreciate you, brother. You. Appreciate you and peace. peace.